Hey everyone. Welcome back to Easy Robotech, the go-to channel for all things tech and configuration. Whether you're a beginner or someone experienced in tech, today's video is perfect for anyone wanting to configure a Cisco switch through a web browser without diving into the command line. We know that configuring a Cisco switch can sometimes seem intimidating, but don't worry, we've got you covered. In this tutorial, we'll be walking through how to configure the Cisco switch using a web browser, step by step. So, sit back, grab a notepad, and let's dive right in. Now, before we start with the advanced configuration, I highly recommend that you watch our previous video where we covered the initial setup for the Cisco using the web browser. That video takes you through setting up the management IP address and other essential steps needed before continuing with today's more advanced configuration. In the previous video, we configured the basic settings, including assigning a management IP address to the switch. If you've already done that, great. If not, please go back and check that video as it lays the foundation for what we are doing today. Without it, you won't be able to follow along properly because the management interface must be correctly set up before proceeding with more advanced configurations. So assuming you've watched that video and have your management IP address ready. Let's move on. First, we need to connect to the configured management port. In the previous video, we assigned management to port 1 backsplash 5, so we'll need to plug the patch cord into that port. Next, ensure your computer's IP address is set to the same range as the switch's management IP address. To do this, head over to your network and sharing center on your computer. Select your network adapter and click on properties. Then, Navigate to the Internet Protocol version 4, TCP IPv4, section. Once here, manually change your computer's IP address to fall within the same subnet range as the management IP. Once you've applied the changes, your computer will be ready to communicate with the switch. Now, open up a web browser and in the address bar, type in the management IP address that we set up in the previous video. You may get a security warning, just click on advanced and then proceed. This will bring up the login page for your switch. Enter your username and password. These credentials were also configured in the previous video. Once you log in, you'll be taken to the switcher's dashboard. From here, you can monitor, manage and configure the switch entirely. Through the web interface, no command line required. Let's start with configuring VLANs. VLANs, or virtual local area networks, are crucial for segmenting your network traffic. From the dashboard, navigate to configuration on the left hand menu and select VLAN. You'll see three options SVI, Switch Virtual Interfaces, VLAN and VLAN groups. The SVI option allows you to set up management IP addresses for different VLANs. You can have multiple SVIs for different VLANs and this means that you can manage your switch from multiple VLANs. For example, you might have VLAN 1 and VLAN 1000, each with its own IP address. This gives you flexibility in managing the switch from any port within the VLANs. For example, if you're connected to the switch through VLAN 1000 but haven't configured an SVI, switched virtual interface, IP, you'll need to change the port and connect to the VLAN for which the SVI has been created. This process will consume more time. To create a new SVI, click Add, then enter the VLAN number, let's say VLAN 1060, give it a description and set the admin status to either up or down. If you want this VLAN to have admin access, set it to up. Now, 
you can assign the IP address and subnet mask by enabling IPv4 or IPv6 depending on your network setup. Next, let's create a new VLAN. Navigate to the VLAN section and click Add. Enter a VLAN ID again. I use TENS and give it a name, for example, CCTV VLAN. You can now assign specific ports to this VLAN. Click on the arrow next to each port to associate them with the VLAN you're creating. Once you've selected the ports, hit Apply. After that, don't forget to update and apply the settings to the device. You'll see the VLAN appear in the list with all associated ports visible. It's that simple. This graphical interface makes it so much easier to configure VLANs compared to the traditional command line interface. If you followed the steps correctly, you should now have a fully configured VLAN setup. One important note, if you're configuring trunk lines between switches, make sure the native VLAN on both switches matches. This will ensure proper communication between switches and help you see neighboring switches within the network, as you can see on my screen now. In our next video, we'll cover some common errors you might encounter when configuring trunk lines and how to troubleshoot those errors. Make sure that after making all changes, you save your configuration by clicking the Save button at the top of the menu. This step is critical because if the switch reboots or loses power without saving the configuration, all your hard work will be lost. And that's how you configure the Cisco switch using a web browser. As you can see, you don't need any command line knowledge to get your switch up and running with VLANs, SVIs, or advanced configurations. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to Easy Robotech for more tech tutorials. We've got plenty of great content coming up, including more Cisco switch configurations, security system setups, and general tech tips that'll make your life easier. If you have any questions or need further assistance with your switch configurations, feel free to drop a comment below. I'll be more than happy to help. Also, don't forget to check out the previous video if you haven't already, and keep an eye out for future videos on even more advanced settings. Thanks for watching, and until next time, stay tech savvy.